On this episode, we speak with Russian player Evgeny Donskoy. He talks to us about Andrei Rublev and what a great guy he is on and off the court. We also speak to him about no qualification for the US Open and, obviously, his epic match where he beat Roger Federer. I'm good, good, and you? Yeah, yeah, really good. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for like agreeing to come on the podcast. Uh, really appreciate it. No, it's great. Nice. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. I mean, what uh, what have you been up to? In have you been like quite strict lockdown over in Russia for quarantine? Or it is. Yeah, it was actually very difficult times, and uh, um, I actually had a baby at that time. It, oh wow! And, uh, oh, yeah, cool. yeah, congratulations! So it, thank you, guys. Yes, thanks, guys. And it was yeah, it was pretty fun to have time with my family. And but at the same time, yeah, you couldn't practice a lot. You couldn't do. I was just running on the stairs in my building where I where I live. You know, actually, anyway, I stayed for three weeks at home. Didn't do anything. Not even five weeks because we arrived from Indian Wells. And I was thinking, okay, I might have this. Um, chance to have this virus you know and uh, and they say oh, you, you need you need to stay home for around two weeks yeah and then yeah and then i was just uh, i was just there at home for five weeks and at that time it wasn't easy to make a test because at that time i don't think they had tests in normal clinics only for the people who actually had some symptoms you know yeah so yeah so i was staying in five weeks at home then i started to run a little bit, making some fitness. And then uh, after, I guess, two months, I started to play tennis hidingly <laughs> in some <laughs> private places, you know, but a little bit, by bit, you know. But now it's easy. Also, it was very difficult with the passes. You needed you needed a pass even to go out to the supermarket. Like, wow. you, you need, yeah, you need to, how do you say, you need to to go to the website and saying like, okay, four of april i'm going out to the supermarket and they give you like two hours if they of course it's like more officially nobody gonna meet you there and saying okay where's your pass it happened to somebody but very few people so it was a little difficult but now it's easy now everything is open i mean not not restaurants now not cinemas but it's good now now it's good all good now Wow, it sounds like the lockdown was a little bit more uh, intense than it was here. I don't think we we organized. haven't. We didn't have anything yeah. like that. But I think <laughs> our government at the moment is a bit of a mess. So that, we don't know. Really? What's going on. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I know. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't fun for sure. But anyway, the big news: you're now a father. Yeah, yeah second time there. actually. Second oh. time father. What well, yeah, amazing! So, so you must. Not a new thing for me. Sorry. So you, so you must be like, if you're not getting the chance to work out, you're probably lifting and like keeping your uh, arm Correct. strength going, Correct. lifting baby. One guy, one guy is fifteen, almost fifteen kilos. Another guy is now <laughs> five kilos. So it's, you know, unbalance. <laughs> you got some uh, good reps, then you can just go down a set every, each for time. Sure. You need. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, it is fun. Actually, Are they it's two good boys? because yeah, there's two boys. Yeah, it's two boys. Even my fitness coach he he was he was controlling some other players like in distance you know like what did you do and all these days we didn't meet but the <laughs> first five weeks is that weeks is already said that i didn't do anything yeah. but then uh, he started to tell me okay and today you have this work and then you can rest 
And then, but he know that I have kids and he said, okay, everyone have rest. And Evgeny have this work with his two kids. <laughs> it's not a kind of rest. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but it's, it's okay. They're, they're good. They're fun. Uh, that's great to hear uh, yeah well it's like I, I think it's been i've heard a lot of people i've had a few friends or family members also had children as well during this quarantine time but yeah another, uh, yeah do, do you see do you see in like uh, another positive side to it like a few of my uh, friends obviously they would only get two weeks off of work to see their newborn child now they've got months to go and spend with their newborn child which is must be Correct. great yeah, that's what I'm saying, and because that's that's what I said is like the, because I had this new guy now, and uh, the another one, the older one also, so you can have time to you have you can spend time with them, and it's it's a lot of fun, and it's it's nice because you will not you will never have that much time in your career unless you finish your career. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't wait to see him on the court. Yeah. We're going to have to get him on the court soon. <laughs> the moment they're yeah, walking I mean, and a racket in the hand. Yeah, we, we're playing with a racket in our small apartment, killing everything. The mother is saying, come on, guys. We're at the end of the quarantine on pandemic. We will not have anything fragile in our house. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. Uh, how, how, you, how are you feeling within yourself? You look very well, I must admit. How's, how's your fitness and everything? Are you ready to be playing tennis again now? Or? Easy, 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 easy. Yeah. Fantastic. yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, um, actually, it was usually like a tennis player, they have this, like, already, let's say, two weeks, three weeks off in uh, off season, and then you just, uh, like, you don't do anything no fitness, no tennis. Then you come on court and you're doing tennis and fitness together, and then you're not good on court, like, I'm, okay. especially me. I was, I'm always feeling very bad. Like I need one week to, to, to start to play tennis normal again. Yeah. But in this case, I was off for five weeks, which I was, I was thinking that, okay, I would be very terrible on court. So then I started this fitness and I did this fitness for more than two weeks. And then I came on court because I was ready physically. I was ready. And then on court I was, and I was okay from the first day. Really, I was all right on from the first day. Maybe not to play points, but we was doing everything. We was doing drills. We was doing like running two and one from one corner to another corner. I was all right, and then of course each day I was I, I was getting better and better. But now I feel, I think physically I feel better than the when we was playing because you know you oh, had brilliant. a lot of time to prepare. Yeah, like have, three have weeks. You, how many? Three yeah. months already. Have you had any? We spoke to a lot of other players that they said this has been a good time to let an in, an old injury they've been playing with for a while to heal up for a bit. Have you had any of those type of things? No, 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 no. no. Okay, it was, it was pretty easy. Actually. That's good. <laughs> He's in the form, He's in the form of his life. He can't wait to get back on the court. Oh, I nice. am. No, honestly, honestly, you feel this. I don't know how how other players are but of course you never had that much time at home with your family which is so great and you feel yeah. so nice about that but it's like if you not get used to stay at one place for four three or four months in a row so if you just stay if you just tell me like okay you can fly for one week somewhere and then come back i would say yeah it's great maybe even with the family it's not mean of the being together or not it's just like the way of life you know to travel somewhere together with a family it's fine but i'm just saying yeah that nice. sort of, that sort of takes me on to a, another subject uh i've seen the some of your countrymen are playing right now at the moment obviously the andre rublev is playing in this adria is it adria tour in adria tour yeah yeah and yeah. uh, he's doing like fantastically well i've seen he's been beating everybody uh rublev he, he, yeah, right. actually, I, I just saw one match. He was playing against Chilic yesterday. Yes, I don't know how he how he did the last like the matches before and after. Yeah. But I'm just telling you about Andre. Andre is the kind of person that if you tell if you tell him what do you rather like, what do you want, or air or tennis, he will say tennis. If this guy is like. <laughs> yeah. You can see can that as well. Breathe. We've seen a few of his training drills and we, he was just hitting forehands repetitively, like non-stop. He seems to have like a Correct. very good work. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. And I mean, he, I think you know, I mean, last year or two years ago, he was injured with his back and he missed uh, Wimbledon and Roland Garros. And uh, 
And then, uh, and I was talking to him, like we we're almost talking to him like every second, third day in a week. So, and I, and I said, how are you? And he said, man, I just cannot do anything. I want to play tennis. So everyone was telling him, man, just go to the concert. He was living in Barcelona as he lived now. So yeah. he said, a lot of things to do. And I, and I said, okay, go to like the concert, fly somewhere for five days with your girlfriend, whatever, to the family coaches was saying to him he was restricted to come you know like he cannot come to the academy at all yeah. because he cannot play wow. tennis otherwise he have to it will be like the rehab will be longer so yeah. he was hiding from some people <laughs> and going to the wall to play tennis <laughs> and it's these things this guy is crazy so yeah, but he's nicest guy on tour and uh and i'm pretty sure i actually saw his he posted a picture that he's flying to croatia and i said okay so you're happy now he said man I'm going to play a match. It's just so good, man. Finally. That's good. Uh, he's, he's nice, yeah. That's uh, everyone, I think. Character. Everyone wants yeah. to play. It's yeah. It's great no. to hear that side as well, because he's the one person that we don't really get to like no. hear. Him. You don't get to hear him speak that often, so it's nice to hear what he's like a bit off the court as well. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can tell you. This guy is really... I mean, I know that we're friends, and it's maybe not... Not I'm not the right person to ask because you know I will never say bad about my friend, but I'm yeah. just saying it true. And uh, really, this guy is the most kind guy, and he's so open all out off the court. He's just he can do everything for you if you if you like if you're friends. And this guy is like yeah, he's crazy about tennis. I think he can he can do. I mean. He can play forever. He's, he's gonna be this guy. I can't see him ever sure. retire. He's gonna be playing for a yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, if you tell him, okay, man, we give you one billion dollar, but you have to quit tennis, he said no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, see. This guy, this is kind of a guy. Yeah. So is he he's trying amazing. to? No, I'm glad you said it because we're massive oh. fans of him, and we noticed yeah. that he started the year in 2020 in ridiculous form as well. He won a few tournaments. Uh, I think it was Doha as well. Yeah. Doha, the lead. Yeah. 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 Brilliant player. It just, it just, it's amazing when someone sort of matches their their skill and that their, their like national ability alongside their passion for the game as well. And them two yeah, things together I'm, can make can literally propel you for, like, forever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I was so happy because, I mean, I will. I don't want to say that I'm that good, but like September before San Petersburg Open, which was after US Open, September, I think. There they asked me like, "What do you think about our new generation? What do you think about Andrei Rublev?" And I said at that time that uh, I think Andrei Rublev will show us very soon something something crazy in results. Yeah. And he won Kremlin Cup, then he won uh, some other matches, some good results, and then he won Federer, then he won another two ATPs. I know Federer, it was yeah, actually they, I think they asked it even before you saw, but something like that when he was a little bit down and. Uh, and I was like, I was waiting for his because I was 100% sure if you would tell me like, can you bet like as much money as you, I mean, all your money that he will play good and he will win another few ATPs. I was say easy, yeah. easy. This guy is, he's crazy about this sport and he has so much talent. He worked harder than, I mean, you cannot say harder than everyone, but he's working not less than everyone. So he, yeah. will, be, he will be, and he will be more and more. And is he, has he tried to convince you to come out to any of the tournaments with him? Like in no, Croatia? I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. But from Russia now, it's not that easy. I think Karen okay. is going to... We are started to practice with him now, like when we started to, to be possible to practice. So, and he's coming there to 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 some, some tournament. It's like four weeks. I don't know. It's Croatia, okay. Bosnia, Serbia. Yeah. Some, some of the weekends, I think he wanted... Djokovic invited him as well, so I think he will come. Amazing. So, yeah, yeah but it's not easy to travel now. You know. Quite interesting that those players as well, though, uh, obviously like your Russian uh, teammates, but that you have a 100% win record over Rublev and Kachanov in your career. No, yeah, in the most you are. Maybe not behind closed doors. Yeah. Behind closed doors <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have to yeah, tell no, us no, about no, that. I, I actually... <laughs> I actually lost uh, to Rublev in one challenger a long time ago. Okay. And then in one, actually in two challengers. Then I beat him in once. Then I beat him another time. And then I, yeah, I beat him this last time. I beat him in Toronto in main yeah. draw. And that's why you can they not count the qualies. And I lost in uh, okay. not the, this year, the year before in Sydney qualies first round. Okay. And it was a terrible match from both of us. And uh, we, we arrived both. We arrived both. He from he arrived from Doha. I arrived from 
Pune, this ATP in India, like the day before, and we pra- played the next day. Time of difference, crazy. I mean, it was a terrible match from both both of us, but he beat me pretty easy, actually, like six one, six four, something like that. And with Karen, yeah, with Karen, and I never lost to him, but. I think, I mean, I honestly think for me it's easier to play against Karen, but I think I never played against Karen when he's on top on his peak okay. form, you know? What yeah, do you think? So. That's, uh, obviously, they're two completely contrasting games. Like, you've got like Rublev, who's the shorter guy, who's like just all around the court, and then Karen Power and height. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that something I noticed in a lot of your games when you're playing, the harder that they hit it, you hit it harder each back <laughs> twice as yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, maybe that, that doesn't work what, so well for him. <laughs> yeah, with, because he do, he just does pretty much the same thing that I like to do on court, but just much better. That's that's why it's always tougher for me to play against him. Yeah, and it's completely different players, Karen and uh, Andre. And uh, this guy, Karen, is supposed to serve very, very good and it's not easy to return. But now, actually, from the Madrid, I was surprised. We was in Madrid in Davis Cup in November. And I was surprised how Rublev improved his serve. I, I don't know, maybe because of really? some, something. Yeah, I don't know. Like his serve, it was like 221, 222. But it was a little bit altitude. So yeah. the, the, time, the ball was going a little bit faster. So, I mean, Karen was never served like 220. But he was serving well. But he actually was playing unbelievable in Madrid. Yeah. You're too humble, though, man. You're right there as well. <laughs> You're a legend in our eyes as well, for sure. No, no, no. I understand my place, so it's okay. <laughs> you've, you've been on the well. You've been on the tour for a lot longer, and you've probably well. You've gained, gained some amazing victories, which I'm sure I, we may as well get onto like the great, great victory. Which uh, I was just watching it earlier again today when you beat Roger Federer. Which mm. what an incredible thing to have Thanks. played him once, Thank beat him you. once, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and uh, this time, yeah. I mean, obviously he wasn't playing good, so. Ah, come <laughs> on, come on. <laughs> come on saying, no. I mean, there is no player that can beat Roger Federer if he was playing good. Maybe two people in this world, you know, like Rafa and Novak. Then if he played good, then there's no chance. Yeah, I mean, it was it was. It was nice, of course, and it's a great memory for me, but yeah, it, it, it's in the past already. So. I saw on that match that the floodlights went off after the first set, after he won the first set, and then he had to take a little bit of time just to uh, wait around for them to fix the lights before it uh, came. Away, yeah, yeah this is it, a... <laughs> it was fun because, because, you know, I mean, my friend was with me there, you know, Mikhail Yuzhny. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. He, he was there with me because he had uh, some some health issues and he left like two days before even one day before to moscow from dubai and that uh, and happened it was um four all and yeah and the first point of the game my serve and i was on the side of this light so the lights off they said okay let's give us five minutes we're gonna try to fix it and then we'll see and then uh, I, I went to I went to Mish and I said, okay, what do you think? So I supposed to because I was I saw the ball good. It was like you know it still was okay to see the ball. And I asked, him, do you think I have to continue? He said, no way. I mean, just do it then because Roger maybe will start to play worse. You know, use yeah. this a little bit. And then I come to the net. They come to us and say, guys, look, we need time to fix it, but you might continue. And it was already late because it was night session. And Roger says, yeah, I'm fine with that. Do you okay to continue? And then I'm looking at Roger and I s- it's not easy to say no. You know, when the Roger say, yes, I want to play, continue. And I say, and then one guy who is nobody saying, no, I don't want to play because I want to wait. And I say, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay to play. Of course, if you're good, I'm good also. So, yeah. yeah and then we continue. Actually, it was a tough game. Tough two. First two points. And then, yeah, I survived. And then, yeah. Look at the second set, though. <laughs> you saved three match points against Roger Federer and then took the second set. This is like, yeah, not many right. people can say yeah. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and then obviously went on another tie break in the third and then put Roger Federer away. And then this great celebration, I think you threw your racket about 100 metres. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it was 5-1 down on tie break, third set. It yeah, was exactly. 5-1 up. And then it happened, yeah, it becomes six five up for me, and I re- yeah, he served very well. I returned easy, on, not easy, like just to the court somewhere short and high, 
and he missed it like this. And I was thinking, actually, it was very, very close. It was out, but it was very close. I thought he would take a challenge, you know, Hawkeye, and then we will see in everything. But he didn't even try. Because, I mean, it was out, but still, you could try. You know, when it's the last point, you just yeah. take a challenge. He probably but, just... Yeah. Thought, yeah. Go on, Jared. So no, as, no. The years have, as the years have gone, how have you mentally been able to sort of adjust to these difficult situations? Like you're five one down in the final tiebreak against Roger Federer. Do you think? Do you play each shot differently as then, or do you take it every shot individually and just think I'm going to just do what? Yeah, I'm practicing? I would say for me, always tougher to start the match mentally. <laughs> Let's say because I, when I came on court with Roger, you know, it's yeah. I mean. <laughs> In Dubai, they love him and it's full stadium, fully packed. And then they say, like, we start to warm up. And he said, left side of the chair. Uh, there is uh, Evgeny Donsky. He won, like, six matches in his life. He's nobody, blah, blah, blah. Everyone club. And then, uh, I mean, they say, like, some challengers. He won some challengers, which <laughs> oh, which Roger, I don't <laughs> and, and then and then And then they say, on the right side of the chair, and that's it. And the people start to scream, and the, like the, spectator, the, the, the guy who was saying that in the microphone, he couldn't continue. And like 18 Grand Slam champion, like 100 tournaments <laughs> win, and then you're like, oh and my And then five God, minutes just, later, they're still going. Just <laughs> really, really, really it's, not true. It's, it, it, it's true. He's taking short off, everyone's screaming, and like you cannot hear anything. Wow. So, and then, then to start for me, these matches were against these guys, like that you respect that much, and actually, the good, good players it's not easy because you think okay i need to be on like uh, on in shape and from the beginning i need to be in the match like one all two all and then it's okay but if you lose these first games like your serve and i remember that i lost his serve and i survived in mine so one all then i think it was two all and i remember that i start to feel like easier <laughs> actually as easier like mentally yeah, yeah. Actually, I lost the break next game. I lost my serve next game, but it wasn't happened because of mentally or something. And then it's become for me easier to play, much easier to play. So in this case, so answering your question about this tie break, it, I wasn't feeling any anything. I was just trying to, I was just trying to hit. I mean, uh, playing every point, just trying to survive in every point, like uh, doing my best, like to going for forehand, making some winners with a forehand. So. I had my plan in my in my head, and that's actually it. So the, you will never. I was never. I was pissed when I was losing a point, but I was never pissed that I'm, I'm down five one. So yeah, yeah, I don't didn't, didn't think differently at all. No, that's a good way to look at it for sure. And um, mm-hmm. you're just talking about the the, the challenges as well, because we're massive advocates for the challenges on this channel, and like it's something we love. Like, we love yeah. tennis, like the the challenger tour. We think it's special. We think the quality of tennis is exceptional. There's so many good players on that tour as well. Now it's you more know, and more, yeah. More and more as well. It always seems to always be growing. There seems to be always another, another new player coming through and just watching play. Think, yeah. wow, how, where's this guy been? And yeah, yeah like, true. Uh, <laughs> and, I'm, and we're always thinking, like, what can we do to sort of, or what can, well, not what we can do, what can be done to sort of promote the challenges more, to get more people, more eyes on the challenges, more money there, to get more people watching. And like an idea we come up with is maybe like pushing them on to later on in the day get more people that way and stuff like that. Do you have any ideas or any thoughts on this? Yeah, it's, but I'm t- I can say that there is some challenges that many, many people coming to watch. Like, let's yeah. say I was in challenges in China, which was a big tournament and we was playing at the same stadiums where it was ATP, like Chengdu, Zhenzhen. Okay. And, uh, and it was a lot of, uh, actually, there was no people in the final. I'm playing final, there is zero people. Nobody comes to watch. They are inviting some kids from the schools or university students. So, but there is like challenger. I remember I played Braunschweig. It's in Germany. Yeah. Oh my God. There is every day somebody, there is a concert every day during the week of the tournament. There is it's so many people. So I would say that it just depends on the, on the place where is the tournament. If the people love this tournament, if they're not, and uh, but I'm telling you that many many people are trying to get challengers tour challenger tour better and better and promote it much more. So even to put some more money in the in ATP is trying. Actually, it's a big issue. I think now they're trying always trying to increase this prize money in um, 
yeah. in Grand Slams for the top players, top hundred players, but they never trying to increase money in challengers. So yeah, that's exactly what the people that, yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the what the we've people... had so many times on the channel. We just feel like the money seems to be so very uh, stuck at the top, and if you're not playing at the Grand Slams, it's difficult to sort of push it down. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I and I heard from somebody they even had an idea to make less points on challengers and then an ATP more points. Let's say they had an idea. I don't say it's going to yeah. go through. I'm just saying that it might happen. And it's even worse for challengers, I would say. Yeah. So, I mean, my, yeah, I mean, uh, what can we do, can be done? It's, I mean, if Kurt Schreiber is playing some challenger in Germany, of course, some people are coming and he's playing yeah. challengers now because yeah. his ranking dropped. So, if some Australian or um, that's why players coming because of the good players. And, uh, but to put some more money there, I, I, I'm not a businessman. I don't know anything in this but <laughs> but i'm just saying that it's i think i remember i started to play tennis in like at 22 i was top 100 so let's say at 20 i started to play a lot of challengers main draw being seated and i remember always first rounds you had some pretty pretty much always you had some easy draw from the first rounds when the, some like for like so far away challenger somewhere in china you play first match uh, first match against the guy who is 500 the cutoffs was like 700 but now any challenger you come and there is uh, so many players you always yeah. fight for the even first round second round doesn't matter if you see it or you're not see it and it's so tough and i feel it by myself because i haven't experienced before and i had experience now and it's completely different so so much more how you say players good players on challengers now yeah, yeah. so the level so, is, people don't so know I. these players names that's the thing like you've got Cole Schleiber there is obviously is a, is a good example he's someone people would know a lot more because he's played at more the ATP sort of level and For sure, because yeah. of that however there's a lot of players who are just as good as him now coming through people don't have a like you can walk past them in the street and people wouldn't know who they were for sure, players, and they need so this many. extra promotion and pushing now to sort of bring their game and lift it to the next level and give be given the opportunities. That's what we feel. I'm sure Ben. Yeah, Eckers, I mean, yeah, it, 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 exactly it, the same. Yeah, it would be it would be great, honestly, Aaron, because <laughs> it's it's huge, huge difference between guys who stop. I mean, let's say even top hundred. I, I'm not saying the guy who's staying hundred in the world like ninety nine. He's making a lot of money. It all depends on expenses. Yeah. But the guy who is 280 is not making almost anything. Just yeah. surviving because he's not yeah. getting in in Grand, grand Slam qualities, exactly. yeah. which they improve money, which increase money now. So, which is great, even in qualities. I remember in qualities, I remember played in Wimbledon. I got like one, no, 2,000 pounds. Lost first round qualities. Now it's almost 8,000 or something like that. Wow. That's yeah. a good increase. And it's good yeah. money for the people like that. But still, if he, you are not getting in this quality of uh, Grand Slams, you're not making anything. Yeah, I mean, about the money and the, how much money you make, which ranking you have to be to make a lot of money, it's it's a different story. I mean, if you ask, yeah. I, I can say my opinion, but it's just just saying that for the challengers, you, I would say like this, if you play challenges, you will never be make, you will never make money. Good money. Yeah. That's so tough. Just the money, oh. ju just the money that you survive going to another challenger and making something. Just like yeah. again. Gone. Uh, that sort of ties in nicely from what I was, uh, you just sort of reminded me. Obviously, we've just got the US Open and all these announcements at the moment. They've just, they, they announced they weren't going to do any qualifying at all. So there's a lot of players that are missing out on qualifying money it now. It was, you cannot imagine how, how, how you say, I mean, all the players were saying, I mean, except some of, some of the names were saying that it's a terrible idea to make tournament with points at this time at the time where is no challengers yeah. Yeah. so let's say i mean let's imagine you're staying 125 i'm 100 510 i'm getting in on main draw you're not getting in on main draw. i'm making points and you're staying in, in pandemic in your country you cannot play tournaments you cannot play points it's like no way you can make points yeah but then they then they said but guys i mean because they said in the beginning like that and then they started to say that they announced the calendar that at 14 of at the same time, at the same week where when the start ATP and or whatever, which ATP tournament will be first, then the challenger will be the same week. So that's why uh, that's why pretty pretty fair right now. But again, yeah. but again, let's say okay, challengers, okay, but the futures. I know that it's not ATP, 
problem. But the guys who are less than 500, less than 400, again, it will be yeah. the same problem. So the guy who is 280, 50, they're getting in on challengers, they're making points, but the guys who are 400, they cannot make points. So this gap between them will be even yeah. more, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the one thing we want to do. We want to try and push everything more together, not just separate it even further. Again, yeah, it's it's also a long discussion. I was very, not <laughs> angry, but I mean, again, it's as I said, I'm not, not very, very good in this, but I was just trying to use a logic. And then I talked to one, uh, like Mike's coach, and he said, but you know, there is no way then when they will start all together. So it's better to start some, after that big, big problem in our life it it's just better to start somehow and yeah. then i mean yeah. it what i don't like i mean personally again if you if you use a little bit of humanity inside of you and logic it's um they they made they made cincinnati instead instead of qualities of use of you know yeah, yeah. So they could have made qualities of use open and exactly, not yeah, making yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, exactly, but, yeah. ag- but again, I understand. I again understand they uh, just want to make more money, which it's is actually normal. But, yeah. yeah, but but again, we have to we have to understand that the that the thing is, if they make money, then there will be more challengers in America yeah. or around us. So again, it's better for us in some case. But yeah, but if yeah. you if you think a little bit, then I mean, I have a lot of friends who are. No. Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Could, could, <laughs> no worries. Uh, could um, the call can uh, go on top of the Zoom? No worries. And yeah, and then that's that's the thing. So it's it's. I have a lot of friends who are supposed to play qualis. And, yep. and he, of course, he, they, all these 128 players, they wanted to play qualis instead of seeing on the TV Cincinnati Open, right? Yep. But, but as my friend, as my co-ex-coach said, that he said that, look, how the world lives. You remember that when the pandemic starts, everyone, everything was closed. I get, well, let's say in Russia, I don't know how it was in other countries. In Russia, everything get closed except supermarkets and clinics, like hospitals. Yeah. Yeah, the then they start yeah then the construction company or something else started to work so the restaurants were still closed they're still closed now if you don't have yeah. this open area open air area so and and so you could see it in a normal world in the world the same thing so the construction company open but another so they can make money and the restaurants business they cannot make money so it's pretty much the same here so they open what they can. They open the use open to make yeah. this happen. That's a brilliant you know? And then they're going to... That's a brilliant real life example. I never thought of it like that as well. And it's very good. That's what my coach said. Like and I, and, right, I, and I started it? to think. And I started to think. Let's say... let's. And he asked me the question. Do you think if they will say to you, okay, we are not going to do Grand Slams and ATP before we're not going to be sure that mm-hmm. the same week will be Futures Challengers and ATP. You, what do you choose? it's going to be start in january or maybe you can start in august this in yeah. september already is this and then in november already exactly. everything exactly and also and also be, because bef- without use open without atps challengers maybe will not happen so if the atp now happen kids build this washington and the use open grand slams then the challengers will maybe come sooner but of course, yeah. there is no doubt that they have to do something with the points because yeah. it's no, 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 not fair at all to anyone. Right. I mean, who is, who is not going? Who is not going to play uh, yeah. challengers? Who is not going to play Grand Slams main draw? Yeah. Speaking speaking of uh, moving away from this uh, bit of a controversial topic, but uh, yeah, we move. <laughs> I just wanted to just uh, I saw something in your record which was like really interesting. I noticed that you had played two finals in Russia in your career and they both happen to be against the same person which is a friend of the podcast Ilya Marchenko so you played okay. him once <laughs> you played him once in Penza in 2012 true, true, which you lost true. and then you played him later in the same year again in Russia and then you beat him so yeah yeah it's actually was the, it, it was a year it was the year um, when I came to Top 100, it was 2012, I think. And I, I had a great year with these challengers and I played this 
I didn't play well. Then I started actually in pens. I made this final. Then I won one challenger in Kazakhstan straight the next week. Then I, I was good, good, going good. And he was also going good. And this pens and challenger was no chance for me, like pretty much because he was not killing me, but he was, he knew everything what I'm going to do. Uh, okay. And, but at the end of the season, this was the last match of the season that we played in this two main challenger in Russia final. I was playing like just very like we made it a lot the best match of this at uh, that season, and it was uh, yeah. So I mean, it was great. And actually, Marchenko it was always tough for me to play against. Him. I think he read the game good. He's not missing a lot. He, you need to know what to do against this guy. I mean, <laughs> at that time when no, 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 really, because sometimes yeah. you just come on court and you say, okay, I'm just gonna trying to do my, what I can, what I'm usually doing, you know. Yeah. But here you need to do some. Some some other stuff. And not that many players like this that you have to think. Okay, okay, no, not not hit that hard. Not hit with your forehand that hard. Okay, make it softer there. Relax, uh, rest. Uh, not not rest. Like uh, wait a little bit. So yeah, no, this guy he's a good is player and a good man as well. We had him on the podcast last month, didn't we, Ben? He's good, yeah. he's good laugh. He is very nice guy. He's yeah, very yeah. nice guy. Very he's funny guy. Worker now. We're literally running out of time. We've only got like five minutes left, unfortunately, on this Zoom call before it gets cut off. But we've got a few like quicker okay. questions for you anyway. Of course, of course. We'll, yeah. just, we'll uh, just start sorry. off with like the US Open, obviously. Like, Are you going to be playing in that? Are we expecting you to play? I, I'm, I'm going to be. Try, I'm gonna try to be fast. Gonna but um, yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna to go for sure if I get in. in okay. But I will not lie. It's, it's not easy with the money. Of course, after the money that month is in the pandemic and that huge money that I have. So I will have, I will try to use this, that opportunity for sure to play. And, uh, and why not? Because everyone will play. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for sure, again, it was this points thing. It's not, not that, not that great, maybe, but I think they're going to, they said that they're going to be challengers in the same week. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy about that as well. Oh, nice one. And then another question we've been asking all the players is: Do you have a particular favorite player to watch on the tour? Someone you just Federer. love watching? <laughs> Federer, no doubt. No, I mean, it, no, honestly, Federer. Not because we played, not because something. Yeah. Federer is just why I like Federer because he can do everything. I mean, Rafa is good. Djokovic, these guys are legends. I don't know, but the Roger, I like how he come on in coming to the net soft and he's coming serving like you know this uh, surfing after the surf he's coming to the net and uh, he's defending good and his one hand back back and the technique is even so beautiful you know yeah, so it's just crazy. nice yeah he it's just very very nice to watch i mean Djokovic is i, I mean it's very good great player but the, it's not easy like he's just when you watch it's just a lot of balls going in and it's not easy to make a winner to him and it's not that great to watch it so I would say Federer yeah, yeah. it's like a brick wall it's always going to come back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never play against him even though he didn't practice but he's yeah, I, th- I think he's so tough like, to play against this guy yeah I know. Oh, well, anyway, perfect. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Evgeny, for coming no, on the guys, podcast. Thank you. Thank it's you very much. Sorry if I was... No, no, yeah, it's been amazing. Honestly, something. we learned yeah. so much and it's amazing talking to you. You've got great personality. Thank, uh, before, thank I, you before, before talking to you here, I was a massive fan, but I'm even <laughs> a bigger fan now. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's okay. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll see you in England sometime. Yeah, I hope so. I love England. I, have, um, I had a coach from England, which from London. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I mean, when I'm in London, I'm I always meet him. So I I love England. Great oh, stuff. Brilliant. Well. If we can see you there, maybe one last Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You take care, man. Thank you guys. Okay. Cheers. Be healthy. Be healthy. And you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye.